afternoon, and thank you for joining our conversation today with Hannah Gibson, noted glass artist from the UK. I'm Jane Buckman, Executive Director of Imagine Museum, and I'm pleased to be with you today. Natalia, you want to run the video? As part of our theme for 2021, Imagine the World, I'm delighted to have a conversation with UK artist Hannah Gibson. Hannah studied geology at the University of Edinburgh where she received her Bachelor of Science. Her story in glass picks up from there and I'll let Hannah explain her journey from being interested in, uh, I'm going to say uh, geology to become an artist working in glass. So welcome, Hannah. So happy to have you today. It's, it really is an honor to be here. I'm, I'm over the moon to be here. I really, really am amongst friends as well. So that's fantastic. I, I think it's great. It, it, um, that's, that's terrific. Before we go to the slides that you have provided and talk about your work, you really do have to, for me and for everyone else, talk about this journey from geology to glass. I'm so curious. <laughs> so essentially, um, I spent my formative years growing up in North Wales um, and with the sea in front, um, and we had Anglesey and Puffin Island and with Snowdonia, the mountain range behind. So it was hard not to develop a passion for geology and geomorphology. So from Wales, I moved to Edinburgh in Scotland where I studied for four years for a degree in geology, which was fascinating. And, um, and part of the course, we went to the Isle of Mull, which is just off the west coast of Scotland to look at um, igneous petrology and the, so essentially all the volcanics there. And, um, and, and at that time, they spent hours talking about this incredible material glass and all the lecturers would argue about it for hours and um, I thought anything worth arguing about and being so passionate about must be really fascinating. So I spent a lot of time in that four years learning about glass and the properties of glass. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, so, and then, um, so, um, yeah, so, I, so in Edinburgh, essentially, it's, it's built on this amazing extinct volcano. So it's a perfect place to study, really. Um, and then I took, um, when I graduated, I took my first course in glass at Edinburgh Stained Glass House, which was basically making stained glass. And then I took that well-trodden path that lots of people take, so stained glass, fused glass, lamp working. And then um, in 2015, I went back to university to study for a master's in um, glass. So it was two years of, um, and, uh, of, of exploring glass. So for me, I spent two years learning all about the materiality of glass, which was a fantastic time. So my focus was purely on glass as the material. And then I went back um, a year later as artist in residence where I had a fantastic time. It really, really was. Um, so essentially my work sort of sits at the intercept between science and art and it's, I can interweave the two. So for me, it's, it's just, the glass is just, alchemy. Can I ask what the um, uh, people were arguing about glass at the volcano? So if it is... What's so, the argument? So the argument is, is, was glass, they talk about it being an amorphous solid. Is it, is it essentially, is it a solid or is it a semi-cooled liquid? Oh. What, 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 what is this incredible material? So people would, um, so leaded, um, Leaded glass artists would make the argument and say, you know, you're looking at a in a in a um, church. The you know some of the some of the glass will um, change over time. So so people would argue, is it, you know, is it the semi cooled liquid? Is it a solid? What is it? And where did you land after your exploration? 
I'm I'm still undecided. I'm I I'm going to constantly question glass all the time. I'm never going to stop questioning it. So once once that question's been answered for me, that's the end. So I'm going to keep keep questioning it. <laughs> That, that is a, a wonderful story. I can't, uh, uh, I would like to have further dialogue with you about that. But because I know that you have uh, really prepared uh, a, a wonderful set of slides about your work, we're going to move on to those slides. And, um, and as you go through them and you talk about your work, if, if I have a question or something, I'll interrupt. If anyone who is on this Zoom has a question, you can certainly type it in or you can wait until the end of the, the presentation and we'll try to get to all of the questions. So, um, so it's all yours. Take the floor, Hannah. So this, this is the series that I started working on in 2015 here. Um, so I called them recycling narratives, uh, whispering sweet nothing. So each figure was a sweet nothing. And then the collection was a whispering of sweet nothings. So tell me um, a little bit about that and how did the, okay, you're going to go through the other photos. So this is where I grew up in North Wales. Um, so like I said, you've got the, the beautiful, you've got the sea in front of you. Um, that's Puffin Island there, and um, which is just off the northwest coast of Wales and, and Anglesey. So, so looking around, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't not be passionately interested in geology and geomorphology because you just had to constantly question what what is it what 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 are the rocks what's the landscape yes yes, yes. and where does glass fit in with all that then at, at the volcanoes and the molten lava and yeah, so when so volcanoes are made out of you get many different types of volcanoes um and essentially when when those are broken down over many 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 years we can end up with silicon dioxide, which um, then becomes beautiful sand that we know and love, either on the beaches or, or that we use within uh, glass. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. So this is Arthur's seat here, which is um, mm -hmm. an extinct volcano. So Edinburgh in Scotland is, is built around this beautiful extinct volcano. So there's, as far as landscape goes, it's the perfect place to study geology, really. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Is Natalia moving the slides forward or are you? Natalia, you want to keep moving the slides forward? So this is me in 2015 starting um, the Masters at the University for the Creative Arts in Farnham, which is just um, an hour south of London. And that's where you got your Masters. And so that's is that, okay, so, and then talk so, about so. this. I started making these figures. So initially I started um, making these cast glass figures out of the lost wax casting process. So over time I've sort of refined the technique and I've been um, in conversation with people like Angela Thwaites, who's this amazing mold maker and a glass artist, incredible, about trying to make the process um, more sustainable. Um, so that's making earthenware molds and adding grog. And so, so like developing that process and making it more sustainable. So these are the series of cast glass figures that I made. Um, so like I said, they a sweet nothing, each an individual one, a sweet nothing, and a, a series of them, a whispering of sweet nothing. So the plural whispering of sweet nothing. So each one's a chemical experiment in its own right. So these here, I say that they're whispering sweet nothing. So they're often found in pairs whispering to one another. Mm -hmm. It opens a dialogue. And I see that. So when you say each one is an experiment, is that because of the other materials that you're using and well, embedded well, in, or in effect, so, so the two that you have there are um, made out of recycled bullseye glass. They were previously fired um, bullseye projects. So like, like this one here. So the, I love bullseye glass. It's absolutely stunning. So the, the blue um, contains copper, um, is a copper rich um, glass. And the yellow there that you can see there is sulfur and selenium bearing. So when you put the two together, and um, the copper and the sulfur and selenium, you get these beautiful reactions between between the two types of glasses. So so it's completely unpredictable, and um, but so but it creates these amazing effects. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. Yes, very much so. So so I started working in Farnham um, for my masters. I started working on this series of figures. So my work, my, 
work took three different um, areas. So the first one, what I started to do was to leave the cast glass figures out for people to find and keep. Um, and that's a different story. And then the second project I did, which you can see here, um, was I started to make this series of cast glass figures out of other artists recycled glass that they otherwise wouldn't be using. Um, so a way of bringing the glass world, the glass community closer together. Um, so here we have in the top left, we've got David Reiki, um, who uses Starbridge crystal in his work. He's a, an amazing glass caster. And we have um, top middle, we've got Bruce Marks, the delightful Bruce Marks, and on the right, Louis Thompson, and they both work at London Glass Blowing. So they both use Kugler blowing glass, so the same blowing glass, but it shows a completely different color palette between the two artists. And on the bottom left, we have James Devereaux, who is an amazing glass artist who set up Devereaux and Husky with Catherine Huskies, who's at the bottom middle. Um, and again, they use Kugler blowing glass. Um, so I think on the previous slide, there was Adam Aronson sneaking in. We have Opal Seabrook, Catherine Schilling, um, the delightful Ian Chadwick, um, Max Jackard, Colin Reed, Roberta Mason. So it shows what can be done with recycled glass. So quite often I'll use glass that doesn't want to be cast and blown glass um, doesn't, doesn't often want to be cast. So, so it's a labor of love, but, but it does show um, the difference. So this figure here is, you, I don't know if you recognize it or not, but there was season two of Blown Away and the lovely Elliot Walker um, and Beth Jade Wood who set up um, Blowfish Gallery. So this figure here is made out of Elliot Walker's um, recycled glass. Um, so you can see the beautiful shapes in there. So each one's identifiable. And so did you approach each of the artists to and ask for their glass to um, use? Th th there was a oh. mixture. So, so some people had heard about the project um, and other people. So um, an example is at um, Sofa Chicago, um, I met a number of amazing glass artists and, and I talked about the project. So this figure here is, um, you probably will recognize it. So it's made out of the gorgeous, Laura Donifer's glass. Um, yeah. And so all those amazing colors. So, you know, it's colors that she's chosen um, and she's an incredible, incredible glass artist and an incredible person. So this is the back um, of her figure. So you can see it's been cold worked. It's been mm -hmm. flattened and it's to a high polish on the back. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, each one's completely different and part of this growing collection. So on the next slide, you can see um, the amazing Marlena Rose who's got some uh, incredible work um, at the Imagine Museum, the same as Norna Donifer, but um, this, she, she um, sent this, and it's uranium glass. Um, so as we know, she's an amazing glass caster. So sent this incredible uranium glass, which too um, in daylight, it's this um, slightly green color, but um, it under you know this light here, it goes this incredible, incredible green, very strong green. Mm -hmm. So how many of these pieces and how many artists then have you contacted during the time that you've started this project? So far, um, I'd say, so it's part of this grown project, there's around a hundred artists. Um, and I've, I've got a lot of glass um, that, I'm, that I'm still working on. Um, so so it's, it's going to be a grown collection. I'm, I'm not going to stop growing the collection. It's going to keep getting bigger and bigger, but I had over a hundred. Wow, wow. And when I follow you on socials, um, I see that you do put these figures different places and engage them in some conversation. But now I have to be more thoughtful about what I'm looking at and where the glass came from. That's it, well, the hope is that um, that it opens a dialogue. So the figure here, so these two are both 41 centimeters tall, which is, I wrote that down, it's 16 yeah. inches tall. So they're quite large, they weigh 9.1 kilograms. So mm -hmm. like this one here, so it's like the one that you have in the Imagine mm -hmm. Museum. Mm -hmm. It's made out, he or she, it's an androgynous figure, is made out of um, recycled milk bottles and upcycled watch parts. So, so glass has um, a coefficient of thermal expansion. So when it heats up, um, it, it um, you heat it up at a certain speed, it goes to a certain temperature and then cools at a certain temperature and it's, but that, that's 
broken down. So the watch parts um, have a different coefficient of thermal expansion. So, so it's so it's an experiment. Each one's an experiment in its own right. So it's they're, they're very very. Um, I don't know. They're, they're, it's a challenge to make them, but I love a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's solely the watch parts has elements of brass, bronze, silver, and copper in there. So, so each one doesn't necessarily want to work work together, but it's it's trying to fine tune that firing schedule, casting firing schedule, to make it um, so that you know, so it all works together. So, how did you come up with then that particular image that Sorry, so you were? Again. Oh, oh, we'll go with this video first. So, so this is part of the cold working process. So I cold work each of the figures all the way through to a really high polish. So it's important <coughs> to be able to show that um, even though it's recycled glass, it can still be polished to, to a high polish. So I take it from 80 grit, which is very, very coarse, like sandpaper, and progressively higher all the way through to that high, high Syrian polish. So tell me a little bit about, and, and I'm very curious, why that figure? How did that, what is, what is that meaning for you that, that you do all of these um, experiments with the glass in this particular figure? What's um, the relationship to you? I, I wanted to have a shape that brought joy and inclusivity. Um, and if you're four or 104, it's a shape that you can immediately identify with. Yeah. And um, I, I've had many different careers. Um, and one, one thing that I did was I, I worked in a school um, with, with um, various, various age children. But I remember myself, you're, as a child, you're given a, a plastic cup, aren't you? You're not given a glass cup. And quite often, uh, we're very reluctant to touch glass. That's not the case at the Imagine Museum. But no. as children, so, so in school, um, we would take the children to places like the British Museum and um, and um, the Victoria and Albert Museum. And all of our time was telling the children, you know, don't look with your eyes, don't touch. And it was all about crowd control and damage limitation. And I wanted to try and open a dialogue. So using the figures to open a dialogue about the recycling process, about sustainability and about glass. I wanted people to question glass as a material and we have a next generation of um you know glass artists coming up and, and inquiring minds mm -hmm. and instead of you know telling people you know to to just look with your eyes don't touch i want i wanted to find a shape that we could brought joy and and you could you know it would inspire those questions so this figure here is again made out of recycled milk bottles but i i just i i wanted to have a shape brought joy and so because of the figures now, you, hopefully people can see beyond the, the, the shape and, and mm -hmm. see the glass itself and open that question. So I've had people contacting me recently about, um, you know, that they'd seen, you know, various figures or picked up a figure and they want to know more about glass. And they've gone on to do courses um, with Adam Aronson, who's a glass blower who lives nearby. And, um, you know, I, I want people to, it, I want it to open that dialogue about recycling, about sustainability, about glass. And, you know, in the same way that you're doing there at the Imagine Museum, you're, you know, you're feeding inquiring minds. So that these figures here have been made out of recycled television glass. So, um, and you can still see, so there's nine inclusion on the front of the larger one, which is that faint whisper of a previous life. So they've been cast using recycled Bang & Olufsen television screens. So the old thick CR, screens. So I, I remember as a child coming back from school and watching television over time, it became Star Wars, and, you know, but I remember the, the hours spent watching, you know, through that glass and it goes on to have a second life. Um, so this figure here I called Casting Call. So it's recycled milk bottles and inside it embedded is inclusions of textiles. And um, so on, on the next slide, you can see those, those textile inclusions. Um, so, so very, very fine, very intricate detail. Again, it was a challenge to do because one, it's recycled glass and two, fabric wants to burn off at a very, very low temperature. It doesn't want to be taken to 860 degrees. So it took a long time to try and work out how to 
how to incorporate the two things. So I like a challenge when people say, you know, at college, you know, there's a few people who said it's not possible. So all, all that means is I'm going to try. I'm going to <laughs> make, make you more determined. Yes. So, so this this figure here. So when I make them, I start off making test pieces. And um, so this figure here was three and a half centimeters tall, which is about an inch. And um, it's made out of recycled Chanel number no. five bottles. So, so it's, wow. it's limitless what, what you can use. So you look around, you can get inspiration no matter where you are. Um, you know, just by opening the cupboard doors. Um, so, so they do, they, all of the figures start off at this, so an inch tall or an inch small, and then I upsize them over time. So I, I find this whole process uh, fascinating because you are, you first want to be conscious of the material that you're using. So you have this, uh, we'll say green, uh, approach to glass, which I think is very current and which many artists are, are thinking about and, and working with. And then you came up with this figure that is a universal figure, but inside of each of those figures, they tell a story unto itself. Exactly. No. And each one's a completely different story. And so yeah. how, do, how do you document that story? I've, so um, so, so coming from a, I don't know if it's coming from a geology background where we're taught to keep meticulous records. Yes. So I don't know if you, there's thunder going on outside, but um, we're, we're taught to keep these meticulous records. So I've got these enormous technical folders. Um, so, so I document everything meticulously. Um, and and, and so, so that's quite handy. And yeah, so, so, and I take a lot of photographs and so, so I make sure everything's well documented. So th this figure here has been, the previous one, sorry, was made out of recycled Marmite jars, um, which, and, and this one here is made out of recycled Bombay Sapphire bottles, which have that beautiful, um, easily identifiable turquoise blue color. So you're not limited on, on colors. So this is upscaled, so it's 27 centimeters tall. So you're not limited just by using recycled glass. You're not limited on on the color palette. I, I you know, the the color, and then when you describe where it comes from, I I just think that it's uh, it's outstanding. I know that we are getting some questions, and that people are really wanting to know more about your your discoveries uh, and working with the glass. So I'm just going to see if I can. Uh, get some of the questions. Um, uh, is now this is a good question. Is there a type of glass that you're most excited to work with? I'm excited to work with any and every type <laughs> of glass. I I love it, and I I love the challenge of a new type of glass. So I've recently been in contact with um, the Society of Glass Technology in the UK um, about recycling um, insulin bottles. So it's 100 years wow. since the invention of insulin. So there's these beautiful glass vials. Um, and, and again, that tells a different story. So we've seen in COVID, with COVID, the vaccines, how important those glass bottles are. You know, they're yeah. so important, but they, you know, it, they have to be super strong. They have to be medical grade. You know, you, you don't want to be, you don't want to drop them. So, so again, that tells a completely different story. story. Those amazing vials. So is there a, another question that came through? Are there uh, materials that you're using that would be considered dangerous to your health? Um, are there materials? Um, I, uh, so, so, so for example, the process of obtaining um, the old CRT screens. Um, so, so uh, um, so, so some uh, other people do, I guess I'm trying to think it through. So mm -hmm. in theory, yes, but I'm very, very rigorous with um, health and safety. So I'll wear the appropriate grade mask, I'll wear, made, mm -hmm. you know, wear safety goggles. So, so, so there's, there's, there are very, very strict guidelines on, on health and safety that we're supposed to follow. And then, um, you know, that was, 
I, I was already fully aware of it. And then at university, they drill it into you about the importance of, you know, wearing all of this health and safety equipment. But you, you, you can never be too careful. Yes, yes. Um, are there more slides, Natalia? Or did, is this, did we reach the end of the slides? Oh, we got a video. Okay. So this, this figure here was, is made out of recycled windscreens. Um, so he's he's playing here on, on the Syrian recipolap. So um, we have these I have these beautiful Covington recipolap. So it's it's polishing. This is sort of the final grade of polish, the very very high polish. Um, so I I, li I love the process. Cold working is is a labour of love. It takes a long long time, um, especially with recycled glass. And and a figure will take six, eight, twelve weeks to make. The the cold working process is very very arduous but when they smile back you you can't present a second of it so th so this photograph here shows how it's highly polished along the back um you know all the way through from that coarse 80 grit all the way through to that high cerium polish so each figure you know it is it's to show that what what glass is capable recycled glass is capable of doing so again here you can see you know, the be beautiful, beautiful effects. So again, this is recycled car windscreen glass. Wow. So you're not limited. It's um, no, you're not limited, and you're exploring like uh, not only the history of glass. I mean, just thinking about the test tubes and the things that the, the where you're gathering the the glass from. It's really um, it could also be just the history of glass, right? From that, how that's exactly right. Yeah, well, well, our relationship—yeah, I, I just our relationship with glass has changed so much in a short amount of time. So, um, you know, now we we have these touchscreen phones, iPads, yeah. you know, and we're touching glass all day, every day. You know, we're in constant yeah. contact with glass in a way that we never have been before. Um, you know, and over, like I said, in this this these pieces here, which are called tangible hope, are made out of. COVID uh, vaccine bottles. So, so the, the role that um, those vaccine bottles play, those glass bottles played in, in you know, the last 12, 18 months has been crucial. Yes. So, so these, um, these photographs here were, <laughs> so I, I was incredibly lucky. So in 2019, I had an amazing opportunity to, with the gas conference we went to, um, it was in Florida, St. Pete's, Florida. And I had the best time. It, it was just incredible. And I stayed downtown um, overlooking the water. It was beautiful. And then um, one day I walked up um, the road and there was this amazing, you imagine museum and, and I fell in love. There was there's so much to see and so much to do. So many glass artists and glass artists who I'd been you know reading about for years. So I saw Tim Tate's work and gorgeous Laura Donifer and Marlena Rose and, uh, Trish Duggan's wall of you know the thousand Buddhas and, and I, I just fell in love that I just head over heels in love so last year just literally the week before we went into lockdown I, I took my family back to show them the Imagine Museum because I mean we, I've traveled all over looking at glass and uh, there's just nowhere nowhere like the Imagine Museum the the amount of glass that you've got there and the various artists is incredible so, so th this, this is a quote, so it says, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better, it's not. So, so I, uh, you know, through the pieces, I, I want to open up that dialogue about sustainability, about recycling and what, what we're capable of. So I, do, I don't want to, um, you know, with a lot of, I don't know, we see a lot of television programmes, so an overflowing, um, you know, recycling, um, you know, glass, uh, you know, bins and things. And we, we see all sorts of very, very depressing images. I don't, I want to show solutions and not problems. I, you know, I want to show what, what, the re, what part we can play in that recycling process and how important it is. I am so fascinated by your work. I, I before the, the Zoom conversation, I was like, well, I, I just, really want to know so much more because I, you know, we have the one piece, I've seen all of the slides of your work, but I did not truly understand um, the depth of, um, of uh, inquiry and investigation and research that you do into each piece. 
So I'm so happy you're in this show. The, it's not always black and white because when they see your piece, which is just right behind my shoulder here, there is so much that goes into that piece other than this figure that has these um, little mechanical uh, cloth parts, which um, I, I'm just so impressed by, by what it is that you do. Talk a little bit about how the because I can hear it in your voice. First of all, I have two questions. Um, sometimes you refer, well, what I, when I've heard you refer to the figures, what I heard was a he. It, do, you, do you sometimes then have those that are she? I know you were trying to, you were saying that it's not really, doesn't have a sex, but then you, you refer. So I was just wondering in your mind when you're creating, do you see some more masculine and some more feminine so in so with the growing collection so the so for example this figure here the black and white one behind me is made out of bruce marx's glass so so that's a he um, yes. um so yes. next next him there's laura donifer and then james devro so it depends where the glass comes from um, it, it depends on the source yes so does but when, when you're making them and because you're spending so long with them so so literally the the figures might take six eight twelve weeks to make and because a lot of the process is you know you're hand lapping so it's a sheet of glass grit and you're hand lapping for days and weeks and weeks so you do develop a relationship with each piece because it takes such a long time so so it's so when they're called bruce or um you know opal or you know you 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 do you call them by the names i'm afraid so 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 we've yeah so so like all the ones behind me they're all so there's a louis and a david and a catherine i i just think that adds more to it and and that's what i was curious about when you handle each one and you know where the glass is from i'm sure it becomes personal to you then, it's, and it's what so you're doing. personal <laughs> yes and and i'm sure you also think about uh, because you're taking it from another artist, you want to uh, make sure you honor them and give them and their process the respect, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, um, you know, it's so important to their people, like, like Laura Donifer, who, who I've admired for such a long time. And, you know, when you receive the glass and you're looking at it and you're, you know, you're putting it in the camera, you do, you do it so gently because it's, it's somebody's pride and joy it's so special it's so extraordinarily special and you want you want to do you want to make them proud don't you really yes I, I i i see that in the work now i have to see more and i have to look closer and i have to um pay attention because i i'm just so happy with this um conversation that we've had because it's given me insight I love the concept when you say it is the connection between um, the, the science and the, the glass and the art, because we try to show that also in the museum, you know, that uh, that's when we, um, did I lose? Okay. No, no, I could see that perfectly. And when I went to the museum, I think it was last year, and we saw Bertil Valin's amazing exhibition there, and you could see that, you know, the inclusions that he put into the, the ca amazing cast glass pieces. And, you know, you could see again how, you know, that the, the, you know, how the importance of the role of science in, in, in the, all of the pieces, and, and that was indicative of the whole of the um, museum gallery ev everywhere and when you know you saw the Elon Musk quotes and you know the importance of science in in the making of glass. Well I find when we bring people to the museum if they're not aware of the studio glass movement this is where we can capture them is to get them fascinated by just this ordinary material that where extraordinary things are done. So exactly. I, I, that's why I, your approach in uh, it is just really fascinating to me. So then your degree uh, in geology um, was not lost by any means because uh, I would imagine the 
physics and the science that you have to do when you, when you deal with different types of glass, like that process. Do we have to do a lot of research? Exactly. We have to, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I spend a huge amount of time doing research. And so the, the figure behind you, the time and tide figure, um, I literally, it was 12, 12 months of research into oh. all of the melting coefficients, coefficient oh, and into everything before I even put anything in the kiln. So, so everything was very carefully researched and very carefully considered. And, and then that was the beginning of a, an exciting journey. Yeah. I, I, I love the challenge of it. And I love, you know, trying to do things which aren't, you know, the, I don't know. I, I just, I just didn't love, I love the challenge. I, I can tell that you do and the outcome though, after the challenge is just extraordinary. So where to, um, is, is your studio or where are these pieces that um, this hundred in this collection, um, where are others uh, or where else can uh, we see your pieces outside of the Imagine Museum, which now I think I have to put it right smack dab in the middle and tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, my studio, so um, prior to lockdown, I, I'd done my master's and then um, I went back as artist in residence to the University of Creative Arts. So I had access to all these amazing um, facilities there. And so during lockdown, um, we, I started to build a studio from home so I could have access at home. Um, so, so that took a while to do. So, so this growing collection that you can see behind me is all it's all at home at the minute. There are there are various figures exhibited in different places. Um, there's some with the um, uh, delightful Simon Chesterfield at the Chesterfield Gallery, and um, the lovely um, with um, Habitat Gallery in Detroit and the Habitat Gallery in Florida. So so that yeah, they're, they're all they're all over. But but uh, the growing collection here, which is behind me, is um, currently in my studio. Just ready to roam, right? Ready to <laughs> embark on their journey. That's right, too. And they're then good, it's, they're good company. Yeah. <laughs> well, through the COVID. So let's let's hope they start the march and uh, and start uh, moving out and about in the world. I just think it's a really a spectacular focus and how you merge your, I think your uh, science brain to your creative brain and, and how it comes together, I think is just uh, truly remarkable. Um, now, if uh, others have questions, um, I think, uh, Natalia, do you wanna look and if there are other questions in the audience, what either that they can write them or if they if you can see them, if they unmute. Uh, yes, there is, a, there is a question about where can people see this talk recorded? So this will, is it currently streaming on Facebook Live, but also you can go into our YouTube channel, uh, Imagine Museum, and uh, we have this and many others interesting uh, series they display. This should be in, in, the, in about a week or a few days, it will be on our YouTube channel. You have some amazing talks on there, don't you? Like Latches Arts, one was brilliant, yeah. but it's fascinating to get an insight. You know, I was, I thought I'd spend five minutes, but I've always had for hours listening. <laughs> You've got amazing talks, inspirational talks. Yeah, and different like, interviews, when we have different exhibitions, we have uh, almost like there's insight into the artist. So definitely uh, find us on YouTube and uh, like us or subscribe because we are, our plans is to put more and more content there. Thank you, thank you. So, um, are there any other questions that are out there from uh, anyone in our audience? And if you'd like to just unmute yourself and uh, ask the question. This is always the part you just never know um, who's going <laughs> to respond and who's going to uh, be vocal because a lot of people did uh, write their questions down. So, uh, Hannah, I can't tell you. Uh, what a delight that this uh, conversation has been. So um, eye-opening for me. I'm just so delighted to have this conversation. You were talking about uh, COVID, the restrictions in the UK are going to be uh, uh, over in how many more days? 
Um, it's supposed to be the 19th of July, but um, I, I don't I don't know. It's we sort of play it by ear, day by day. It is supposed to be the 19th of July, but I don't know if anyone saw in the football yesterday. So that didn't look as though we had any response <laughs> at all, but we do. So I don't, I don't know quite what happened there. But, um, yeah, we, yeah, we had that discussion. Well, I'm only asking because I uh, look forward to seeing you again in person and uh, inviting you to Imagine Museum and to share more of your story and more of your figures. Do, do we have a name for the, for the group other just whispering? I mean, it's a, a whispering of sweet nothings. So the figure oh, you have there yes. is I'm implied wait for no man, but for the collective noun there's a whispering of sweet nothings because they're whispering to each other. The whispering of, of uh, sweet nothings I think is just uh, apropos. I can't thank you enough for joining us today and uh, being part of this Zoom. I look forward to sharing it with others. I encourage people to come at, to the Imagine Museum to see the exhibition that uh, Hannah's work is in. It's uh, called, It's Not Always uh, Black and White. And, uh, and her work absolutely amplifies the point we are making with this exhibition that things might have an appearance of black and white, but they go so much deeper, so much more into each of these pieces and the artist communication and expression. Um, and it's truly to, a delight to have your work up in the uh, museum, Hannah. I look forward to more. <laughs> it's such an honor. It really is such an honor to be part of it. And one of the things I love about Glass is it's a community. And, and it, that doesn't, it's not just the artist that's a community, not just the people behind yes. me. It's, yes. you know, it's the, it's the, the people like, like, like yourselves who are desperate yes. to share that, you know, that passion and that interest, you know, that the yes. community is an amazing place and it's all, it's very positive. I, you know, I, you, we have an amazing community and, and you do so well at the Imagine Museum at trying to, you know, encourage that, um, you know, the, the interest and the curiosity into glass. So it's, so it's an amazing place. I'll go back in a heartbeat. <laughs> I, I look forward to that, to that time. Um, before we sign off, uh, I just want to say that uh, the Imagine Museum is open uh, Tuesday through Sundays. Uh, Saturdays, we have a, uh, it's our family day, so we have fantastic tours. Uh, to take you through the collection um, in a fun and fanciful uh, way. So bring your family and go to our website to find out more information about that. Uh, July also is our summer sale in our uh, retail shops. So if you're looking for that one of a kind piece, please come uh, and check out what we have our, on sale in our gift shop. And uh, also July is uh, our $5 uh, uh, offer to all residents in Hillsborough and Pasco County. So if you're curious about Imagine Museum and you haven't made it here yet, and you wanna see this uh, beautiful piece that Hannah has in, in our uh, gallery, please. Uh, July is a great time for you to stop by. Hannah, any last words that, uh, you have for us and uh, before we, we say goodbye. Um, I, I think a, a lot of, I, I don't know, I think my last words would probably be to just follow your dreams. If you're passionate about something, desperately passionate, follow your dreams. If people say it's not possible, go for it because you, you can make the impossible possible. Yes, yes. Those are wonderful words, Anna. And especially during these times, Let's not forget our dreams and let's know that we can move forward and accomplish them. It's been such a pleasure, such a pleasure. And I look forward to seeing you the next time. I'll be there. <laughs> okay, so long. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.